This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We're going to be doing the section of the Viking embroidery uh, or the Viking workbook on embroidery, cutwork embroidery today. And I have two samples of cutwork here um, on my camera. And if you're not familiar with cutwork, it's a method which has been around forever where there are spaces cut into the fabric and then stitched over to decorate and stabilize the fabric. And some cut work is just, they don't do anything, nothing is done to cover up the holes. So you actually <laughs> can stick your finger through the holes or whatever. You can also, instead of just leaving the holes empty, you can put um, a different fabric. And in, on this one, I chose a sheer organza to put underneath the fabric after the holes had been cut, but prior to them being stitched over. And I like I like that because um, I think it's it's more stable. This is another one where the fabric has been inserted underneath the holes, if you will, I don't know what else to call them, the holes to, well, it, it, I think it enhance, enhances the design plus stabilizes it some, all right? Our handout today talks about, um, mostly using the cut work needles. If we go to our machine and we get it, get the camera so it looks right, and we go to our main screen here and select embroidery, one of the categories we can select is cut work embroidery. And when we do that, we have, if you don't touch the screen, we have three categories of cut work embroidery. Cut work done with scissors, cut work done with needles, and cut work done with eyelets. And our handout concentrates on the cut work done with needles. So following the handout, um, they're talking about the cutwork needle kit that you can purchase. And that's a good place to start if you have not done cut work previously. So in that kit, you are going to get, and let me move over to here so you can see, you're going to get a set of four needles and they're much shorter than a regular needle. This is a regular needle and you can see that there are the cutwork needles are much much shorter and basically they look like you've taken a regular needle and cut them off. However, each of these four needles are distinct and they are color coded and they are referred to by the colors as well as the numbers. And the difference of the needles, the when it's when they've made the needles shorter, they have also, if you will, sharpened those needles. And the angle at which that sharp edge is turned is different for each one of the four needles, okay? So I always wanted to be able to remember which way the needles are turned. So I took a picture of the needles and then I added to my picture the angle that that needle is turned. And then I discovered that actually on the top part of the needle, there is stamped into the needle, the number of that needle. There's a one, 
or a two, and you can barely see the three and the four. It's not always on the front side of the needle, but on the, the shaft of the needle, there is a number that's stamped on it. You really have to have a magnifying glass to see them. But I've always wanted to know this, and, and Mary did too. So if anybody else is interested in having a copy of this picture, I will be glad to send it to you if you tell me. Brenda, are you right shaking yes, your head? Yes, I would like that. Okay. Elizabeth, I would like it too. Okay. Just send it to all of us, please. Yes. Me yeah. <laughs> too. We can Judy, still you want one too? Mary yes. already has one. <laughs> so, okay. i am be more than happy to share that with you because I found it very interesting. And the Judy, reason I'd like that they one too. You want one too, Carol? Sure. Yes, please. Um, the reason that they are at different angles is when they cut the, you have a, a design that has a shape to it. And they, the digitizing is such that, you know, okay, these have a flat side on them, just like a regular needle does. So they are going to go, they will be positioned in the machine as they are in this picture. So if you wanted to cut a straight line, then you would be wanting to either, that was vertical, you would want to use number four. If you wanted a straight line that was horizontal, then you would want to use number two. And if you're going around a circle, you would be wanting to use number one or number three because of the angle that they're going to cut. Now, granted, these are not very big. You know, they're just the width of the, the shaft of the needle. So they're going to make just a tiny cut. And when you watch them work, you see that what we think of as stitch length when we're we're sewing or embroidering the stitch length that the machine is set at for the cutwork needles is much much smaller than we normally see in our sewing and embroidery because they're not very wide and in order to do a, a continuous cut they have to go down much closer together than any of the stitches that we normally use. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So besides the after that speech, besides the needles in that the cutwork kit, is you are going to get, and you already have one of these, but you're going to get one of these multi-purpose tools because the cutwork needles are very sharp and you don't want to handle them the same way that you do a normal needle. So you, when you insert them or remove them, you want to be using this hole in the back of the, the tool to put your needle in your uh, needle clamp so you're not cutting your fingers. So anytime you're putting them in or taking them out, you want to be using this tool. And you normally will get one with your machine and the cutwork, ne cutwork needle kit has an additional one in it. Also in the kit is um, a pamph, well, it, it's a, a printed instructions. There's this little booklet that comes with it and has um, some information about the needles. Uh, it tells you what comes in the kit, uh, and then it also, which is the needles, the multi-purpose tool, and a CD, as well as this brochure. And then it shows you a couple other things, which we're going to go over in a minute. All right. So you and it's it's in umpty eight different languages so no matter what language you speak you can read that book the cd that comes with it is very 
good. It has um, five designs on it, and our handout at the very end of the lesson tell, gives you a um, website that you can go to to download those five designs. It also has a very good little movie on there of using the cutwork needles. And um, I printed out um, the designs. I printed them out in the software and then I printed them out from the CD. And when I printed them out from the CD, they look just look, they look like um, what we would see in our embroidery sampler book with giving you the sizes, the stitches, um, the sequence of your color changes or whatever. And when you see a, a cutwork design, you're going to <clears throat> normally see at least one thread um, color first. And then it will tell you what needles to put in and in what sequence. And this little asterisk here, I think we're going to go through um, the symbols here in a minute on, well, okay. Well, the asterisk tells you to um, place when you, okay. Let me back up for a second. When the cutwork needle cuts, you have fabric and stabilizer in your hoop. But the cutwork needle is going to cut through both of them. So when you are finished with the step that is your cutwork needle, you have a hole in your fabric and your stabilizer. So this little um, asterisk symbol here reminds you that you need to put to slide another piece of water soluble stabilizer underneath and your your first stabilizer that you have hoop doesn't necessarily have to be water soluble but the piece that you put underneath the holes on your design should be water soluble so you can rinse it out when you're finished and you end up with holes and is that an option or can you just put like that extra piece of sheer fabric you were talking or compliment? right if you wanted good question brenda if you wanted to add fabric you would add the fabric and and still some water soluble stabilizer okay good question so, thank so you so the fabric so the fabric will be on top is that what you're saying the, the extra fabric, no the fabric will be underneath your hoop Okay, all right, all right. So put the you put it and the stabilizer together and slide it under there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And that's this is and I don't know that okay. This is a design that was a cutwork design that was stitched out and as it was finished you can see that the water soluble stabilizer is still there. This one I took out to show you that that's it's really a you know a hole there okay but you can still see that the the water so the extra piece of water soluble stabilizer is still in the holes because i haven't rinsed it out how big of um the piece for putting underneath do you okay. recommend um because you won't be able to get the whole thing And how are you securing it? Um, the first step after you um, put the stabilizer under will secure it. Okay. As well as it may stitch another part of the design. It's, mm. It depends on how it was digitized. Okay. To know whether that, and on this one, let me look at some of the other ones. Irk. Um, 
normally you will see on the design uh, like this one the this box around it that would be the size that would you would need your stabilizer so i would say it anything at least an inch around the design you know an inch on each side around the design would be sufficient okay but the the designs that are in the cutwork um needle kit and the ones and they're the same ones that they have given you the link to download in the handout here mm -hmm. it's a good variety of different designs that you can um, use the different options with the cutwork needles okay all right let's see Oh, they read on page two they start talking about fabrics and I am glad they included that in our in our handout today. Um, <clears throat> when I was doing the samples for the class, I just was using some muslin fabric and I did not use a starch or a fabric treatment on it. But when you're doing cut work, it's it's a good idea to do something like Best Press or Tarot Magic just to help stabilize your fabric. So when it cuts, it doesn't get, um, if you will, furry when you cut it because um, if, if the fabric is more stable because you have, quote, starched it, it will make a cleaner cut if you can if you can do that if your fabric you know if you want to do that with your fabric um, it suggests that um, <clears throat> you can um, you should try out the embroidery design which is always recommended if you especially if you've um, digitized it yourself or something and I thought number two on page two was interesting where it says the needles may snag the fabric as they cut some fabrics and you know how some fabrics if you, even if, when you're sewing them sometimes you will get what they call a needle shear where it'll pull a thread so um, it's a good idea to do some kind of a test on fabrics especially delicate fabrics before you um, actually do the real thing to see how it's going to perform and i've only had one set of needles since i've been doing this and i haven't had to replace them because they got dull or or whatever and they have a section here on page three about stretch fabrics which I have done um, some cut work on stretch fabrics like uh, a knit top and so forth, and it worked very fine. And I like their hints about doing it. They suggest that you use a stabilizer that you can fuse to your fabric. And that would be just your main stabilizer. But once you had um, cut the the hole in your fabric, then you the stabilizer that you add underneath, um, you would want to make sure that it was a water soluble one, so you can wash it out. All right. Hi, Lee. Hi. I'm trying a different way. <laughs> okay, well, I hope it works. We're on page three talking about stabilizing some knits to do some cut work on. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> oops. <laughs> All right. Um, that's basically we're on and they say for stitching it is recommended that you use a straight stitch plate and the q foot which we i guess most of us normally would use for any embroidery anyhow so 
um, but it is nice that they have taken the space and time in our handout to address the difference in uh, the different kinds of fabric that you might want to do a cutwork design on. Then there are some symbols to help us identify um, cutwork designs. And on page four, and I don't know why I've written over the page numbers, but they must not have been correct when I printed it out. There is a symbol, which you will see at the top of the page here. It shows you a hoop and a needle and a piece of fabric stitched around, and but cut and turned back. That indicates that you have a cutwork design to use the needles. And in the front of your sampler book, also, they show the cutwork with the needles. They also show cutwork with scissors, where they will have the scissors instead of the cutwork needle. And then if you turn the page, there's a, an expanded explanation of the various symbols. Um, and they do address the asterisk that I was talking about earlier, and they show putting another piece of stabilizer under, and they explain it um, down below the, the icons here with a, a picture of the cutwork needles. And the one important symbol, which you hopefully you will see when you see a, a cutwork needle design, is this the very last symbol should be a brush, a little whisk broom, if you will. And that's a reminder that you should clean out the bobbin area of your machine because you're going to, as it's cutting that fabric, it's going to put a lot of fuzz down in your bobbin area. So let's see. So as you look at different designs in your embroidery sampler book, you can see the ones that are for cutwork needles or, excuse me, the ones that are not cutwork needles will have the symbol with the scissors above it saying that you have to manually cut the fabric away. And you'll notice that on the ones where you're using the scissors, there is no, there is not that little asterisk one symbol there to put the extra stabilizer in because when you're trimming them by hand, it is expected that you're not trimming the stabilizer also, you're just trimming the fabric, okay? Any questions on that one? Have you done that with the scissors? Yes, I have, and, and I was going to demonstrate it here in a minute. Okay. Is because there, a, there are. Is there a okay. reason that they don't do the cutting needles for that? Um, mostly, it's because the designs are older. Prior, oh. they were created prior to us having cutwork needles. Okay, and some of the collections, design collections that they would put out prior to having the MySonet library, um, if they were originally made for manual cutting, sometimes they went in and they reissued them as an updated one so it would use the cutwork needles. But you will find in on my Sonet, you will find um, ones that are for the needles. You will find ones that you're going to have to cut manually. And you, okay, so like in my Sonet, could you take one of those older ones in 
and modify it so it will cut? Um, to the extent that they will let the um, hmm, to it would take a lot of work, and um, I haven't really played with modifying the MySonet designs, so I'm not sure how much adjusting or modification you can do to one of those. And I, you know, it might, you know, it, for an exercise, it would be good, but it might, if it's a, a very detailed design, it might not be worth the effort if it's something you're just going to stitch out once. Okay. Does that make sense? If you want to play, there's some <laughs> manual ones in the machine, which you can certainly play with modify and see what happens yeah cool okay mm -hmm. all right so let's see we're done with fabrics and some of the symbols and again very importantly on page number five about the middle of the page you'll see this red x through some symbols that's telling us that you should not rotate nor should you mirror any cut work designs. And um, that all has to do with the angle of the needles because the cut work design is set up to um, work with the needles that it specifies so that the cut is clean for the shape of the hole that it's making. And if you rotate it, our um, you're going to throw the angle off. If you resize it, um, you may change it such that the cut, those needles are so small that it's not going to add extra, necessarily add extra stitches in there for those little tiny spaces that the needle can cut, if that makes sense. Because remember, those those needles are not very wide, and every time they go through the fabric, they're cutting. But the next cut has to be almost overlap that previous cut, so they're very very close together. So that if you um, are wanting to rotate or mirror it, please don't, because you may not you probably will not be happy with the result. Okay. So back to our, uh, it's talking about sewing a sample design and it, that's the section where it, um, under the word bonus, um, that is where you would get these designs that come in the needlework kit. And real quick, I'll, I'll run through them for you to show you what's there. Um, let's see, I've got them all shuffled here. Okay. All right. So number one is the one that I showed you first. And when you do a cutwork design using the cutwork needles, you don't necessarily use all four needles. Depending on the shape of the design, you can get a successful cut with like on this one, just needles one and two. And that's often the case. You will not be using all of the needles to cut your design. So this is number one. Number two is uses the cutwork needle one and two, but it's cutting little round holes, much like eyelets. Number three is an interesting one because besides having um, cut work in it, it also has applique, but this is reverse applique. So when you've cut your holes in your fabric and you um, put, 
your stabilizer underneath it, you're also going to add some fabric underneath. And then you have a scissor symbol here to cut out your um, top fabric. Because because you have fabric underneath it, you it has what am I saying? Oh, it's not okay. Your your fabric doesn't go underneath; it goes on top, and then you cut it. It stitches it down just like a regular applique, and then um, you end up with. A reverse app, okay. Mary, I'm help me. <laughs> yeah, but I was looking at that, and from looking at your picture, it looks like there's little square holes throughout. Is that it, the case? Okay. Or is that just Ar the around the edge of the design you're talking no, about here? In the background, in the background is the same color yellow. Oh. But no, the only thing that's, unfortunately, they picked a fabric that matched one of the colors in the fabric that they were. Because otherwise, yeah, that, because I was thinking, well, if those are all holes, it would make more sense to put it in back, not in on top. So, right. yeah. So you're just saying that in this particular case, You'd treat it like a, after you put the water soluble stabilizer there, you'd treat it just like a normal applique. You'd lay the fabric on top, it would stitch around it, and you'd cut it. Right. Trim it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there's that one in there. And then this one, um, this one uses all four needles and you can see there's one thread color, there's four needles, and then there's the cut. <clears throat> when you use the cut work needles to create a hole in your fabric, the cut work needles do not con cut a complete continuous line. There will be little places where they leave the fabric connected. And <clears throat> when the cutwork needle is finished, you will go in and clip those little tiny connections. The reason that they do not completely cut that out is to keep whatever is the cutout piece from possibly falling down into the machine are becoming loose and getting somewhere on your design where you don't want it and getting it stitched down and ruining your design. So <clears throat> you do have a little bit of, of work to do once the cut work needles are finished to release the takeout pieces, if you will, with a pair of small sharp scissors. And this particular design, um, it has, you can see, yeah, very faintly around the edge, you see the green stitching here, that, which is the thread color. But then there, the cut work needles are actually going to cut the holes in the design, plus they're going to cut out this design, and you're going to end up with like this, these little flower kind of pieces that you can use. And you can actually use this vinyl that's backed with a fabric if you're going to cut out something that's going to be, quote, freestanding. OK? Or if you wanted to make um, anything you that. I'm sorry, wouldn't... have you done any of that with the vinyl? Um, I have not cut out any freestanding pieces. What we ha did do when we first got um, our epics was, let's see. We made this 
hello this cut work leather bag and let me go back here let me this is all cut work here and we these designs are built into the epic and we made these bags out of this marine vinyl wow with the cut work that's fun yeah and they're they're in the store somewhere okay okay so if you see a design if a design comes up on your screen and it looks like this where it's just all these mishmash of colors that actually is um that's the four colors of your cutwork needles and that tells you that it's pretty it's a freestanding design because your cutwork needles are cutting around the outside of it so when you see something like this <clears throat> don't think it's crazy it's just that um that's a cutwork needle design and you can do it on fabrics uh if you did it on a fabric i would be um i would want to use a fabric that somehow was stabilized so it the edges of it didn't ravel because you're not going to be stitching over the edges you're just going to be cutting all right and the last design is this um another little flower which again uses the <clears throat> all four cutwork needles and they have given us two versions of that one um hopefully when you download those designs you will get the instructions that go with them but they have crossed out some of the steps in that sequence that was for this other version of it so you're only you're actually just doing the outline stitching and then cutting the the holes without stitching around them and again i would do that on something that wasn't going to ravel badly or something that i had um stabilized with um and a fusible prior to doing the cut work Brenda, you're thinking. So are you <laughs> saying the one piece is freestanding and one isn't? I'm sorry, Lee, do that again. So there was one freestanding and one not then? Um, no, neither one of these are freestanding on number five. Okay. It's just that they have just cut the holes without stitching, doing the satin stitching around them. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, the only one that's freestanding is this number four one. Or what I'm calling freestanding because I don't know what else to call it. Thanks. Okay. All righty. Um, okay. So that's the section, our lesson section of the workbook. Um, when we are on the machine and we bring up our embroidery designs and say we bring up our cut work with scissors it will show us the designs that are in the machine that are made for that application and these would be the ones that you could um try to modify Brenda okay um, now those those are built into the machine and they here the, it's collected them from all of the designs and I always want to be able to pick a design like that one say number seven and load it but i want to know ahead of time whether 
you know, like what colors and what sequence and so forth. So you can go to the thread color edit and see your threads. And again, remember this is cut work, but it's not um, not a needle cut work, it's a scissors cut work. So I wanna know where this design is in my sampler book so I can see the real instructions for it. You know, where, when do I cut and so forth. So this is number one, seven of the um, scissors ones, and it I've made a, a scribbly chart of where these designs are, and I'm going to put it on, on a, a spreadsheet, and I will send it to you so that you can you can say, okay, that's that's number seven in the um, scissors ones. And that is, in my book, that is design G77. Oops, come here. That's design G77. And now I can see the sequence that I'm going to do three steps and then I'm going to cut my fabric. So <clears throat> when I send you this design, which hopefully will be today or tomorrow, and you will be able to look each one of these designs up in your book to see your stitching sequence on it without having to, to fumble through and look for it. So Judy, that's, you just did um, uh, hard labor trying to find them in the book. There's no way on the machine that it'll give you the number, right? Not that I know of. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, I just, um, I went through the book and I was looking for the symbols. So when it would have, um, as well as the pictures. But um, while the update was loading this morning, <laughs> I went through the book and, and looked at symbols and then I marked my book. And then when I could get back to the machine, I did the cross-reference. So um, how the, if I'm going to use one of the designs for the scissors and I, <clears throat> I could not find a way on the Viking to, for it to give me this screen with my designs on it without having to go back to the this screen and and picking that category so i'm just going to pick the number one design there and find my little hoop which i have fabric and stabilizer in and my little tutorial is going to give me step-by-step -step instructions if I have not done um, any of this before. So those are there if you would like to refer to them. This is my design and I'm going to I don't expect you, this is, I'm just going to do this as a demo real quick so you can see the difference. And, um, okay, as you can see, the first thing that it's going to stitch out is just some outline stitching. That's going to be my guideline for cutting. All right. So let's, whoops. Go ahead and stitch that out. Is there a method to what these different A, B, C, Ds mean in the sampler book? I'm sorry? 
it doesn't keep all the cut work stuff together in this sampler book. Is that what you were saying? Yes, ma'am, it does not. It mixes okay. everything up. It puts, it's in the sampler book the same sequence it is on the machine. And they never did separate them by technique. Okay. Okay. So that's that's why they've given us these um, categories for the different techniques. To find the design for us that are use that particular technique. Okay. So once once it has stitched out my little flower design and it it went around twice so that we're stable then we're going to take some very sharp scissors and i particularly like these for this as well as doing applique and i find that if i just stand my scissors up with the blades a little bit apart and pinch it will snip my fabric then i can slide in and trim close to my stitching and i'm not trimming my stabilizer away i'm leaving my stabilizer there so i'm going to <laughs> like i'm doing an applique backwards i'm trimming inside instead of trimming outside and you want to be very careful that you don't trim your um, stitches, but you do want to trim closely to them, okay? I'm just going to, I'll trim just a couple of these and then show you what happens next. And you're not seeing me. And I like these little scissors, they're spring loaded, so I can nibble around a, a curve and get really close. Okay, so now I've I've trimmed out two of them. And hopefully I've okay, so now I am ready for my second color. And, okay, it's going to put some um, underlay stitches in there, stuff to uh, stabilize the fabric for the satin stitching. I'm going to 
fast forward it so it's a, so it's stitching one of the petals that I've cut out. I'll stop it there because that's a, <laughs> you can see how how that works. It would okay. It would come back and set do some uh, underlay stitching and then um, do the satin stitching around each one of those. And the stabilizer is still there, which would wash out when I was finished with the whole thing. So that's that's the different that's how the non-cut work needle works, designs work. So if we want to go back and do a cut work needle design, and I invite you to do this along with me. Um, I'm going to go back to the Joy of Sewing screen and I'm going to pick Cut Work Needles category and I'm going to pick the number the number one design that is there, which is this little design that I showed you earlier. And you need your 120 by 120 hoop. Um, let's see. That little guy is G56 in your sampler book. Um, right. Let's see. Right here. So we have one thread color. We have Cut work needle number one. We have cut work needle number two. We have stabilizer added after needle number two. And um, then the stabilizing, um, put the, the number four step is to stitch, secure the new piece of stabilizer under the hoop and now after number four we go in with our little scissors and trim the loose cut work pieces out and then stitch number five to finish our design so this is not sing along with mitch this is sew along with judy so I'm going to go ahead and embroider this out and you'll 
are welcome to embroider with me and use your cut work needles. I don't want to 180 by 80. Oh, please. My fault. It selected the 80 by 80 hoop. And I have the 120 hoop, and I neglected to change that. So I'm fixing that. And now it's happier. Okay. So again, the first the first color step was to um, stitch the stabilizing stitches for the cut work. So. Now, on our screen, it tells us to change the needle and put in the cut work number one needle. All right, so over here, we are going to remove our embroidery needle. And insert our cut work number one needle, which is our red one. And I like to just put my embroidery needle in that little slot so then I know where it is and I don't lay it down somewhere and lose it. Then I take my multi-purpose tool and with the flat side of my cut work needle, to the flat side of the hole in my multi-purpose tool, I put my cutwork needle into the needle clamp. Okay, and, as, and then before I do anything else, I'm going to remove, completely remove my needle thread. You leave your bobbin in but you remove your needle thread, okay? And push go. And, and you may have noticed that when it 
where it starts and stops, it doesn't go completely all the way to right when it ends. It doesn't go all the way to the beginning. It leaves a little tab of fabric. And as it's going around, it'll do kind of like a little jump. That's where it's it's um, doing the leaving that little piece of fabric connected. So now I'm it's telling me to put in cut work needle number two. So using my multi-purpose tool, I take out my number one needle and put my number two needle in my tool. And then snug it up and let it stitch those out. Okay, now I'm finished with my cut work needles and my screen is telling me to put my thread back in. So I'll put my regular embroidery needle back in. Rethread my machine. Find my extra piece of stabilizer and slide it under my hoop. And I want this secured before I cut out my pieces. You can see, you can see that they are cut, but they are still attached because I can't lift them out. So this this will secure them, and it will also, besides securing it around the outside edge, it is also going to secure it the stabilizer around each one of those holes. Okay.
Okay. You notice that when it did this outside securing stitch, that it did it at a basting stitch length, but when it did the securing stitches around the individual cutouts, then it went to a, a sm much smaller stitch length for us. <clears throat> so now I'm going to slide this forward and take my scissors and clip out these pieces where they're connected. Get my hand turned around right. Okay. And again, I'm being careful not to clip into my um, new stabilizer that I've put in there. And you can see how fuzzy this got because I did not, um, I'm using a, a muslin fabric and I did not do anything to um, starch it or stabilize it like I could have with um, some best press or something like that. So I'm going to try to defuzz these a little bit when, as I trim this these pieces out. Oopsie, sorry, quit going. Okay. And now it will it will stitch the final satin stitch and the little decorative design that's inside of the design. Oops. Judy, the only way you knew to add the stabilizer was because of what you when you found it in the book, is that right? Right. I'm, I forgot to hook my hoop back up, so it started in the wrong place. So I'm starting that step over. Much better. So Judy, as far as I can tell, the I didn't mean for you to stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I, I can't hear you when it's running. That's okay. okay. Well, as far as I can tell, the designs in the kit are exactly the same as the designs we can download for free, right? Yeah. That's true. Okay. Thank you. I just want to make sure. Yeah, they they were being very generous with us. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Is there a recommended speed for when you're using the cutout needles, cutwork needles? Start over again, please, Brenda. Is there a recommended speed, machine speed, when you're using? Well, the I never, needles? as you can see, I never run at warp speed. I usually run almost half speed, just because I'm more comfortable with that, and I think it gives the machine a better chance to do its job. Uh, I know, you know, some people are more comfortable with running faster. I, in particular, am not. <laughs> so it's it's kind of a personal choice, but I do believe that you know, if you run a little slower, you 
give the machine a better chance to do a better job. Okay. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Ah, that nice sound. Okay, so now the embroidery is finished. The stabilizer can be washed away and little stray threads, which could have been clipped before. Um, and this basting stitch can come out. And then as the last step of <clears throat> in our sequence, we're asked to clean out our bobbin area and let's see. Let's see how much fluff we have in here. Eh, not too bad because we only did just a little bit. But if you were doing a, a fairly large um, cutwork design, so it's still a good a good practice to get into to clean this out after you do a cutwork design. And if you're doing a <clears throat> a really big one. Um, it wouldn't hurt to do it as an intermediate step, but the reason you don't take the bobbin out is that if you do that, then the machine thinks that um, you've run out of bobbin thread because it it has no way of knowing that it's it's not supposed to be looking for bobbin thread. So you either have to, you could use the little um, okay, what am I the little the little cup thing that we put in if we are doing felting designs, you could put take your bobbin out and put that little cup in there, and that would work also if you didn't want to leave your bobbin in there. But the the needle is going down through your your needle plate, you know, right at here, and it's a good ways away from your bobbin. So your bobbin isn't really in danger of getting um, damaged by not taking it out. So any questions on that? I thought when we um, used to buy a collection of embroidery designs, you'd get a, a booklet with it. And I happen to have this particular booklet. And looking through it, here's this little design that we just stitched out, modified a bit to make a larger design. which I found interesting, but there's, you know, here's um, some examples of some freestanding ones that they've cut out. Um, and there's some, some beautiful intricate cutwork designs that are available as we used to buy them in a collection, and now they're they're putting more and more of these in our Sonet library, so you can and find them 
there. <clears throat> um, where's, okay, what did I do with the other books? Uh-huh. The couple other books I have is these, um, this one where they have made virtual strips of lace using the cutwork designs, using cutwork needles, beautiful heirloom type embroideries with cutwork. So, Judy, have you done cutwork things before? Did you have a sample to show us? Um, well, I did a lot of um, bun warmers, but let me go get a t-shirt I made. Okay. This, oopsie, this particular book has several of those freestanding type of designs in it. And I, I suspect that they eventually will show up on the, the library. So, and there are some, some very, very pretty cutwork designs available. They make beautiful necklines or sleeve edges. They would work as a an edging on a pillow or pillowcases. It would be, be just exquisite. Okay, Judy's got her t-shirt to show us. Huh? Kind of shows uh, up kind of light on here. Um, but I left it open in there. There you go. <laughs> it's always backwards. It's like doing it in a mirror. Yeah. That's great. So, Good job. Was it fun? Yes. I, you know, it's like everything. When I get a new attachment, I made a whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I understand how that works. Has anybody else done any other cut work? Mary, have you done some? I have. I don't know that I have anything. Well, let me look here and see if I have anything handy. But how about Lee? Have you done some? This is Lee T. Um, yeah, I did do some of one of Nadine's Christmas ones. It, it was really fun. She's coming next week. Well, next week I think. So I'm so excited. <laughs> You were asking earlier if you were going. Yes. Yeah. And mine's a tree skirt, a little tiny tree skirt. It's so cute. It was really fun. Did you use the cutwork needles? Yes. Okay. I, I just would have to go dig everything out to find it. So I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. <laughs> but it is really neat. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe you'll need to bring it for show and tell to her class. Okay, that's a good idea. I will do that. Yeah. Thank you. So, Judy, I, I can't find anything right now, but did you ever make any, I mean, those long strips of lace are just yeah. cut work lace. It's just gorgeous. Did you ever make any of those? No. <laughs> okay. Because they're designed for the endless hoop. Or not. Um, yes, because okay. if you look at, let me get where we can see the light, it does have the um, line, alignment marks as okay. part of the design. And, and what was the name of that collection, the Romantic Network? Uh, okay. It's a Viking, it's number 219. Okay. And you know, you don't really see those those numbers, but sometimes on the um, when you go to the MySonet, um, and let's see, I can share my screen and uh, let's see what we do here. I want to share. Whoopsie, no, 
pencil. I need to get into here and my Sonet library. Okay. None. And I want to go to the library. All designs. Okay. Just a second. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. I have to <clears throat> now. Now if I say share. Okay. Okay. Now. Um <clears throat> on here, um let me do this. I'm going to shrink my screen so I can see it. <clears throat> okay. Um, if I do cut work and I say I pick a design and it goes to it and um, <clears throat> sometimes down here on it, it will have those um books like i had just showed you if you pick the and i'm just going to pick designs at random um to see okay there and there it shows you can actually it'll bring up the book that that design is from and not only can you see that particular design and all the instructions for it just as if you're looking at the book but it'll show you the whole book so you can see the see other designs that are in that collection but they don't they haven't done that for everything and i it may be because some of the designs aren't part of a collection but i i found that to be very helpful that you could <clears throat> you could do it if you download a design that has this available you could certainly um do a screen capture and print it out or whatever so you had the instructions that went with the design that you downloaded because no, you're doing that you're... go ahead go ahead sorry you're doing that through MySonet, not the software, just the website? Yeah, the MySonet library website, yes. MySonet, okay. I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Thank you. See up here, Lee, where it says library.mysonet.com? Okay, but it's not in the software. You go to the website, actually, right? Use a browser. Right. Yeah, okay. it's, yeah, it's just in the internet browser. Okay. And I've um, I've <clears throat> selected a design, and that particular design has this under documents. It has instructions, and that's took me to that. It took me to another tab, which was that booklet. And. Some of them may have them and some of them may not. And there's no indication on the library as to whether it is has cutwork needles in the design. Of course, if it's colors like this one, you know that you're seeing the cutwork needles. But when it looks like this or like this, you have it says cut work hanger but it when you look at the colors there are no cut work needles so you know it's a manual cut work and it also happens to have the booklet which would give you your instructions for those designs <clears throat> so um so in looking at the, the uh, first one that you have up, the decorative um, booklet, uh -huh. 
It's got some designs that have cut work with yarn on them. Have yes. You ever, have you ever done that? That looks cool. No, I haven't. Maybe that's a, a class in the future. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it does. She does have... Um, let's see. There, like that one has yarn on top of it. That looks cool. And it? see, okay, look over here in the directions your stitching sequence, those little, that little four cornered diamond, which refers down here, they're saying to use your um, yarn couching foot, which you use in embroidery. Okay. So that, that's your indication that those steps are using yarn. Very different, I'll have to try that. You don't have to have a class because I guess <laughs> that's something that, yeah, that there you do. Well, if they don't to me too. my Sonat, then you, you know, you couldn't download the design for free. So, but yeah, and these are beautiful designs with or without the yarn. Gorgeous. Aren't they beautiful? Yeah, I think the yarn really makes it though. Yeah, see that's that's a well, it's not the same design, but it's similar, the same type of design. It's a floral design, and they've enhanced the flowers with the yarn. And you know, some of the some other designs. <clears throat> this one has yarn, also. Oh. Judy, I did a search on cutwork needles, and it looks uh -huh. it looks like it's only bringing up designs that have the, use the cutwork needles. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go back, and let's do that. So, cutwork. And it still has those. This, these are still part of that towel thing. So I'm going to click on one of those and see. See, that doesn't have needles in it. Did yours come up with that design? I'm talking to myself. Yes, you did. But I guess I did. I didn't click on it. I had clicked on some others and they all, okay, you're right. So it did come up with all of them, but I clicked on some others and you could see the the needles. Yeah, the, the colors of them, yeah. <clears throat> well, not just the colors, but in the color list, you could see the- Oh, in the color list, yes. In your yeah. stitch out sequence, yes. But yeah. there are- yeah, but the, the one like um, this butterfly yeah. is obviously that that's cutwork needles. I just happened to know that those those towel things were not didn't use the cutwork needles. And it's so nice. You know, a, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. You Lynn. know, there's a price on them because we have the library. It doesn't cost us, right? Right. The price is if you want to buy it. Okay and make it yours Thank you. permanently. Thank you. <laughs> and then once you, you know, once you have it, you have it and you, um, you can do anything you want with it. Right, but if we don't want to buy it, we can still get the information on how to stitch this design because That's we already have it in our machine, in our library, right? I see now. You can download it, yes, from the library and then get the information, yes. Right, and I see that whole booklet too. That's really neat. Thanks for showing that to us. I, I discovered that because 
I want to see that before I go to stitch something out. You know, I can see the sequence of colors and I can see whether they have cut work needles or whatever, but I want as much information as I can about the design before I go to stitch it out. Absolutely, that is really helpful. That's true for all of our library things then. That's great. Right. Not just cut work, yes. Because that had really thrown me off too. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Anybody else? Brenda's shaking her head no. Well, I think you covered it. Thanks. I do have a question about um, my, uh, when I'm loading my design into, when I did this, I took my hoop back off of the, off the machine so that I could cut out the fabric. But then when I put it back in, I did this twice. I put it in, I went back twice over it. Because when I put it back in, it wasn't, I must not have pushed it in far enough, but I did it twice to make sure that, because I'm having problems putting it back out in after I take it off the hoop or okay. take it off the machine, not out of the hoop. No, but you've said that before. Yeah. That you had problems with some of your Kimberbell stuff. Yeah. Um, and it feels like it's into me and it doesn't move or anything, but. Okay, when you put it back in, um, <clears throat> let me get this thing over here. Okay, okay when you, come here, you're not going far enough. Okay, when you put it in, are you just putting it straight in and hearing it click? Yes. Like that? Yes. When you put it in, you do not want to touch this. Okay. I Are think I might, that? I might be touching that. These, be, uh, it feels really stiff. Um, and I okay. have never used this hoop before, so that. Well, they are gonna be stiff to start with, but if you are pushing down your release button when you're putting it in, you can get it not in the right place. Okay, all right. Okay. So Thank you know, you. Even if it is stiff, it, it, I, if it's stiff, I recommend that you, you put your hand on your arm okay. and push with the other hand, just stabilize your arm and make sure that it clicks, but don't touch your release button. Okay, thank you. I'll try that again. Okay. Thanks for the help. Okay, you can just, um, I mean, you can take what you have in your hoop right now and put it in and then hand wheel your needle down to see where it's gonna hit, to see I if it's- on this one, I couldn't tell where it was going to go anyway, so I didn't really. On other ones, I have done that. Um, that's what I did on that Kimberbell one. Yeah. Because I could tell that it wasn't going to hit in the right spot, so I moved it over. But I, I might be touching the, I might be touching that button when I'm putting it back in, and I will stop doing that. Okay, please. Yeah. Okay, because you can get it in the wrong place. Yep. And it, obviously, and it will be obviously. All right. Anything else? Nope. Anybody else? I need to go. Thanks a lot. Okay. Judy. Thanks for being here. I appreciate every one of you. And uh, yeah. yep. thank you, Judy. This was fun. I love this. Yeah. Good. We'll see you maybe at um, Nadine's. Right, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Bye. All right, All right. thank you, ladies. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thanks, Judy. Bye. Bye, Lee. Carol, are you, whoops, she's gone. Okay. <laughs>